everyone welcome back to Gandhi Tantra my son Vishal Singh so in the previous video I told you I taught you that how to calculate square of any number starting from 1 up to 200 so here I am back again with a new video in this video I am going to tell you that how we are going to calculate square root of any particular number if you like the video then you please press the like button and the subscribe button to get updated for the more new techniques of calculating maths so here I will discuss with you that when we used to calculate square root in our childhood days, we used to do a method that is called long division method. But in case of long division method, the time consumption is very low. And in this competition arena, if you follow that standard method, then it would be very much harmful for us to score good marks in mathematics. So in that case, what we need to do is, we need to learn the shortest process through which we can calculate square root of any number. And this will be helpful for you in many kind of questions. Suppose if we go for simplification in banking exams, or if you go for compound interest, if you go for profit and loss and for many other topics, this method is going to be very important. So now you tell me that whenever we tell square root, you just remember one thing, that square root can be calculated only for perfect square numbers. Because if I think of a random number, I could say 126 or I said 4325. So if I take any random number, then square root can be calculated. Reason, it's not a perfect square number. Now, there is no basic method to identify that whether a number is perfect square number or not. So here I will be discussing with you that how to calculate square root of a perfect square number. Later on, I will be explaining with you again also that in case of a non-square number, how to calculate a square root or in case of a perfect square number, what are the methods or what are the precautions to be taken or what are the techniques so that we can understand that whether this number is a perfect square number or not. So you see, before starting square root, I have written here three different numbers. Now, starting from these numbers, I will just try to come across the left hand side of the board. You see, I have written from the square starting from 1 up to 10. And I have highlighted one place. What is that place called? That place is called unit space. Now, if you kindly observe that starting from the square of 1 up to the square of 10, in the unit space, some days are there. For example, 1 is there, 4 is there, 5 is there, 9 is there. Some of the digits are missing. We know digits are from 0 to 9. So out of these digits, which are not present here, we see 1, we see 4, we see 9, we see 6, we see 5, and we see 0 also. This 6, 9, 4, 1 is just the alteration. So if you observe, you will find that the digit 2 is not present, the digit 3 is not present, the digit 7 is not present, and the digit 8 is not present. Now these 4 digits are not present in this chart. What is the reason behind it? The reason behind this is whenever we find any particular number, whether it's a two digit number or a three digit or four digit or five digit, whatever number, if in that particular number the unit space is being occupied by any of these digits, you can straight away say that this is not a perfect square number. So whenever you find that unit space is occupied by any of these digits, it means that number is not a perfect square number. So if it's not a perfect square number, we cannot calculate its square root. Now, how do we calculate square root for perfect square numbers? For that, I have written here three different numbers. Now these numbers are going to explain us with three different conditions. Now let's check out what is the condition. If I come to the first number, I gave you the number that is 5184. So what you will do, straight away you will go to the right hand side of this number and select two places from the right hand side. So from the right hand side I selected 4 and 8, it means I selected this 84. Now as soon as you select this 84, you see in this number 84, what is in the unit space? You see the unit space is occupied by 4. As soon as you see this unit space is occupied by 4, you come to the left hand side of the chart. That unit space 4, it comes in the square of 2 as well as it comes in the square of 8. So what I will write, I will write here 2 and 8. Why I wrote 2 and 8? Because unit space 4 is occupied in the square of 2 and it is in the square of 8. After this, the rule of 84 is finished. It means from now onwards we do need 84 in this number. Then we move on to the next part. The next part is what? 51. Now as soon as you see this number 51, you have to think of a number, of a square number which is just less than 51. Remember, not nearer to 51, it should be less than 51. So less than 51 is you guess how much? 49. And square root of 49 is how much? 7. It means you can directly say 
that the square root is going to be either 72 or 78. So what was the method? I am repeating once again. From the right hand side, I selected two numbers, unit space is 4. Unit space 4, it comes in the square of 2, it comes in the square of 8. I wrote in here 2 and 8, 84, 1. The meaning was 51. 51, a square number less than 51 is 49. We have to select the just below square number. You can also say that 36 is also less than 51, but we will not take 36. We will have to take the number which is just less than 51 as well as it is a perfect square number. So I wrote 72 and 78. Now we have to find out that which number is correct or which number is a perfect square number. Out of these, one is correct and one is wrong. So how to nullify that wrong number? We will do one step. That in these two numbers, one particular number is common and that number is what? That number is 7. We will write it 7. After writing 7, we will put up multiplication 7. Then, we know the numbers, uh, number system from 1 to 100 or 1 to 1000 whatever. The after the number 7, which number comes? The number comes 8. So, we do multiply it by 8. 7 into 8, it gives us 56. This is called next multiple result. I am repeating to you. Next multiple Result. In the short, we name it as NMR. So, for the first time, I am writing it as next multiple result, but you should remember NMR. What is why it is NMR? N means next, multiple means multiplication sign, and result means the next number. So, we have to multiply the number which is common in both the cases with its next number. You remember one thing, we are not taking this 8 from here. If you have a got here 4, we would have done 4 into 5. If you would have got 11, we would have done 11 into 12. Alright? So as soon as you got 56, now what we have to do, we have to compare this 56 with that upper remaining number. The remaining number here is how much? 51. Because I already told you that this 84 is a more useful number. Now in this 56 and 51, what you observe that this 56 is more than 51. Now if 56 is more than 51, according to our conclusion, we can say that the next multiple result is better. So whenever we find that the next multiple is a dispersion, our answer is going to be the smaller number. I'll write here, the answer is going to be the smaller number. So smaller number is here 72. So 72 is the required square root of 584. I'm repeating the entire thing once again for your convenience. Just go through it once again. I was given the number 584. From the right hand side, I selected 84. In 84, the unit space is 4. Unit space 4 comes in the square of 2 and 8. I go 2 and 8. 84, 1. Remaining was 51. A square number which is just less than 51 is 49. And square root of 49 is 7. I took 7 in both the cases. After that, what we need to do is 7 is common in both the cases. I wrote 7. Multiple by the next number which comes after 7, that is 8. I got 56. Now, this 56 is called NMR, that is next multiple result. Now this 56 is going to be compared with 51. As we compare, we got 56 is more. That means the next multiple result is more. So when the next multiple result is more, our answer is going to be a smaller number and the smaller number is 72. I hope you guys understood the sign. I am explaining the same concept in the next example. Now let's check out the next example. I gave you 1 double 6 for 1. What I told you? Straight away go to the right hand side, select two numbers, 41. Now what's in the unit space? We are having 1 in the unit space, alright? Now 1 comes in the square of 1 and in the square of 9. So what will you write? We will write 1 and 9. Rule of 41 finish. Next step is what? Remaining number 166. So the square number which is less than 166 is how much? 144. And square root of 144 is 12. So what we will say? The square root is either 121 or 121. Now again we have to move. We have to find out that these two numbers can be the square and one is correct. Now how to find the correct number? What is common in both the cases? 12 is common. So 12 is going to be multiplied by which number? The number which comes after 12 that is 13. So 12 into 13 we get in how much? We get in as 156. So 156 is what? 156 is our next multiple result. Now this next multiple result, this is going to be compared with the remaining number that is 166. Now in this case what we find? In this case we find that the next multiple result is smaller. So you wrote that so NMR is smaller. 
So when NMR is smaller, just the reverse, our answer is going to be the larger number. So what is the larger number? 129. So this is the required square root of 1641. So I hope this method is clear to you that how we calculate this thing. <coughs> now we move on to the next number. I'm just slightly rubbing it because a short amount of space. Sorry for that. I do note the third number as 1296. This was the square. Now, one question will come to your mind that sir, why only these three numbers? Why not so many other numbers? Because these three numbers were there to specify you with the conditions. Now you see that in 1296, what you are going to do? You are going to select 96. Alright, 96. What is in unit space? 6 is in the unit space. I wrote here 6. Now, 6 comes in the unit space in the square of 4 and in the square of 6. So I write here 4 and 6. Now the remaining number is 4, the remaining number is 12. And the square number which is less than 12 is how much? It is 9. So, 9 square root of 9 comes to be 3. So I wrote in 34 and 36. Fair enough. Now what we need to do? We need to do this step. And then the next multiple is it. What is common? 3 is common. 3 multiplied. The next number after 3 is 4. 3 into 4 we get in 12. So 12 is our next multiple as well. Now what we need to do? We need to compare it with the remaining number. The remaining number is how much? 12. Now this was the reason why I wrote 3 examples. Because in the first example we got NMR is better. In the second one we got NMR is less. But in this case, I am getting that our next multiple result is equal. So these will be the three conditions which you can get in calculating square root of any particular square number. So what to do? When it's greater, the answer is smaller number. When it is smaller, the answer is greater number. And when it is equal, in that case also the answer is going to be larger number. Find it. And in case of smaller also the larger number and in case of equal also the larger number. So here 36 is going to be the required square root of 296. Now this was the method to calculate the square root of any particular square number. <clears throat> so from now onwards if you get any square number generally you will get it in your paper whether it be questions of percentage or component or something like that. You just follow these methods. These methods are appearing to be very much easier to you. We need just a bit of practice. If you practice a certain number of questions using this, you will be very easily able to calculate square root of any particular number. I am showing you one more example for your convenience. Let us take a number. For example, I wrote in here 15129. So if you get 15129, what you are going to do? From the right hand side, two numbers, 29. What's in the unit space? 9. Unit plus 9 comes in the square of 3 and it comes in the square of 7. I go 3 and 7. Remaining number is 155. So square number less than 151 is 144 and square root of 144 is 12. I wrote 123 and 127. That means out of these one is correct, one is wrong. <coughs> now what to do? 12 multiply next number 13. We get in 156. So this is what? This is your next multiple result and it should going to be compared with 151. So in 156 and 151, which one is greater? 156 is greater. It means next multiple result is greater. So what I taught you, when next multiple result is greater, the answer is going to be smaller number. Hence we can say that 123 is the required square root of 1529. Clear? So I guess that this method is going to be useful for you to calculate square root of a particular square number. In the next video, we will be discussing that if we are having an imperfect square number, then how to calculate the square root for that. So today we will conclude our video session here. I am not making very large videos so that in quick time you can learn some basic tricks which will be helpful for you in your paper. So thank you everyone. See you very soon. Bye bye.